So in the last video, we started looking at JavaScript in order to create these divs. Uh, we created a loop here to um, create 10 different divs. And you'll recall from the last video that we ended up creating these divs that look like this. So what we're going to do in this video, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify this a little bit. So we have this position variable that with the i times 50, OK? This, this makes it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. So we're going to get rid of this. And we're going to just change this. We're going to start at 50. OK. And we are going to go to um, 650. And then we'll, instead of doing I++, we'll just do I plus equals 50. So in other words, what we're doing is we're going to start at 50, and then the next time through the loop, it'll, we're going to add 50 each time. So it'll be 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, etc., all the way up until six, less than 650. So 600 will be the last one. Okay, and then of course, since we got rid of that position variable, the POS, we're going to change this one to I now. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add in a variable for the color because we're going to be changing the color here. So I'm going to remove this red and I'm going to instead just put in a variable called color. Okay, and, uh, and I'll just go ahead and initialize it right here. So, all right. And so the reason why we're, we're making color a variable is because we are going to want over here to change this color depending on the square. Remember, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to modify this loop to create a checkerboard kind of a pattern. Okay, so you'll see that if I save this file, okay, and I refresh this page, um, nothing really changed. Um, I guess the difference before there was that one black square and we got rid of it because... Um, over here, and before we were starting at uh, 50, and now we're starting at, or before we were starting at 150, now we're starting at 50. So if I change this to 150, okay, then that will, now that black square is coming from this div that's declared right here. Okay, I see the background color black. Okay, and so now we have essentially what we started with. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to modify this and we're going to say, all right, instead of just this kind of like diagonal uh, display here of squares, we want to actually make a whole like checkerboard looking thing. Okay, so I'm going to add in one attribute here into the style string, um, which we'll probably talk about in a future video, but basically it's, it's called um, border. Okay, so this is going to create a border around our square. 1px is the thickness of the border. Solid indicates it's a solid border. You can use dashed lines and things like that. And the color of the border will be black. Okay, and I just want to show you that by doing this, it'll allow us to easier see our squares when we create them. Okay, so you'll see that if I uh, save this, if I refresh it, now you'll see, see if, I don't know if you can see, but these, uh, we made a very, very small border. We, I guess we could have made it thicker to make it easier to see, but now each one of these squares has a, a very small black border around them. Okay, so now onto the checkerboard, okay? So, so what we need to do is we're actually gonna need to create multiple loops here, okay? So we have this outside loop, okay, so going from 150 to 650, okay? And that actually, you'll notice, creates 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, it creates 10, okay, the black one. I guess we, we need to get rid of this black one because this, this one's not helping us any. So um, I think what we'll do is we'll just... Comment this out. This is how you do an HTML comment. And uh, I'll just put in an empty div here like this. Although, actually, I, I don't even know why I would need to do that. We're not going to do that. Okay. So, so that div is gone. And so if we refresh this page, you will see that now we just... Oh. 
Well, okay. I think I actually do need an empty div here. Yeah, so the reason why that happened is if I don't have anything here when I try to append something to the body, it's going to say, oh, there is no body, so I'm not going to append anything. So if I put this empty div here, now I have a body, and now I get my squares the way that I want. Okay, so to make this a chessboard or a checkerboard, all right, what we're going to do first is we need to reduce this down from 650 to 550 because it created 10 squares for us. All right, and we only want eight squares. So see, we got rid of those last two. So now we only have eight, okay? But we don't want to have just a diagonal. We want to have squares all the way into a nice uh, entire board pattern. So what we're going to need is we're going to need uh, another loop, okay? So we're going to copy this, and what we'll do is we'll say for J equals 150, J is less than 550, J plus equals 50. Okay, and so now, okay, um, you will see that we now have, so I will initially start off as 150, and then while I is 150, it's going to loop through all of these J's. So I'll have 150, and then a whole bunch of J's, and then I will increment to the next one, 200, and then a whole bunch of J's, etc. Okay, and so what I, the only other thing that I need to change right here is, um, so I have my top as I, so then I'll make my left J. Okay. All right, now I want you to see what happens when I save this. Okay. When I save this and refresh, you'll see that sure enough, it created a nice board pattern. So remember, I started out, the top started out as 150, so, and then it looped through all of the J's, so all the J's here, then I went to the next value, and then all the J's, and so that's why it's printing out this matrix like this, okay? But all the colors are the same, all right? So we need some way to decide whether or not the color should change from red to black or not, okay? Well, it's pretty simple. I mean, basically every other square is when it's going to change, so we have... Red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, all right? So what we're gonna, so there's lots of different ways you can handle this, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this variable called uh, flag, okay? And I'm gonna make it a true false variable, okay? And so what I'll do is I'm gonna initially set it to true, and then down in here, I'm gonna just, where I have my var color equals red, I'll say if flag, okay, or I could say if flag equals true, then um, if flag or if flag equals 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 true is the same thing. And then I'll say color equals black, okay. So in other words, the color is going to be red unless the flag is true, in which case it's going to be black, all right. So maybe in order to make this more readable, I'll actually make it like this. I'll remove this and I'll say else color equals red, okay? So if the flag is true, then the color is black. If the flag is false, then the color is red, okay? Well, we've never actually changed the value of flag. It just stays true the entire time, okay? So maybe what we'll do in here is right after this line, Every single time through, we'll, we'll change it. So we'll say flag is equal to not flag. Okay? Now wait, what does that do? Okay, so if flag is true, then it'll make the color black, and then it'll change flag to false. Okay? The next time through the loop, flag will be false, so the color will be red, and then it'll flip it back to true. So this is, all this is going to do is it's going to flip the value of the variable from true to false every single time through the loop. Okay? And so now you will see, if we save this and refresh, okay, oh, now wait, look. So we have black, red, black, red, black, red, okay, it's doing what we think, black, red, 
But then it gets to here and it's black again, okay? So, ah, one of the things that we need to notice is that once we get to the end of the row, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red, instead of black, we need to have red here, okay? So we need to flip all of these, okay? So we can just do our same flipping strategy, our flag equals not flag. We can take this and we'll just put it right here outside this loop, okay? So what that's going to do is every single time through the columns, it's going to flip it, okay? And then when we get to a new row, it's going to flip it again, okay? So if we save that and refresh, now you see, look, we've got a nice checkerboard pattern, okay? So again, starts out as red, flips it to black, flips it, flips it, flips it, flips it, flips it, flips it. It then flips it to red again, but then it flips it to black again. Okay, because each time it advances to the next square, it flips it, and each time it advances to the next row, it flips the color. Okay, so you see in not very much code, okay, 22 lines, we now have a very nice looking checkerboard pattern. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to go over um, some more interesting things that we can do with the color. And uh, we'll introduce the concept of random numbers and we'll make um, some more interesting patterns.